In this video, we will show you how to replace your lower ball joint on this 2009 Dodge Dakota. This is part of the suspension and it's located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so your wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. If you have a dust cover, remove that as well. Next, we're going to move along to removing the caliper from this area. But when we do, it's important to make sure that you have something holding the rotor in place. I'll continue on with a spacer and one of my lug nuts to hold the rotor to the wheel bearing. Now we can start removing the caliper. You'll notice for this, you have two 21 millimeter bolts holding it in place. We'll loosen the top one, leave it in there a couple threads, fully remove the lower one. Inspect all of your hardware as you remove it, replace it as necessary. Now we'll start removing the caliper. When you do, it's important to make sure that you hang it on something so it's putting no pressure on the flex hose. Before we hang it, let's just take a quick peek at those pads. Make sure it looks like they're not worn or damaged in any way. If they are, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace them. Now I'll hang this aside so we can continue. Continue on to your 36 millimeter axle nut. Use a hammer and punch to break the axle free from the wheel bearing. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's go ahead and follow our ABS wire coming up the control arm and then all the way up to the wheel well. You can see that you have the tip of the push clip coming through. Use a trim tool and come from the back side of the wheel well here and pry up against the ABS wire. We're gonna try to pull this right out of here. Once you have that down, you can bring it down to an area that you can service this. Looking at this area, you can tell that there's a little tab that we can squeeze in and then gently pull this apart. Once we do, we'll give it a quick check for corrosion. This one looks fine. Let's follow the wire down to the upper control arm. To remove this from its locking clip, we'll use a small pocket screwdriver. Come right in between this clip and gently pry this to separate it. Once you have that up, continue on to removing the ABS wire from the clip itself. We'll give that a quick inspection. Now we'll bring this down over to this side. Now let's move along to the upper ball joint nut. In our instance, we have a locking cotter pin and a castle nut. Let's remove that cotter pin and then remove the nut. Use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the mounting nut. We'll leave this on here a couple threads. Now we're going to have to separate the ball joint from the steering knuckle. When you do this, you don't want to use a pickle fork and come in between this area and potentially damage the ball joint or the boot itself. We'll use a little bit of vibration with a hammer to break it free. Use a pry bar, 
come under here, pry down on that upper control arm, remove the nut. Now let's carefully lift this up and out of here and gently start lowering down the knuckle. As we do, let's pay attention to the axle coming out of the wheel bearing right along here. We just wanna make sure we push this through so we do not damage the axle while we continue. Use a 21 millimeter to remove the outer tie rod end nut and then dislodge the outer tie rod end from the steering knuckle. Let's continue on with the hammer. Cause a little bit of vibration right along the knuckle, being extremely careful not to damage the outer tie rod end stud or the brakes. At this point, we can start removing the 24 millimeter lower ball joint mounting nut. While we remove this, keep in mind, there's nothing holding the knuckle to the vehicle aside from this one nut. So once we get it loose, be very aware that this does not fall down and potentially hurt you. Once you have that off of there, go ahead and put it back on a couple threads. We'll continue on by dislodging the steering knuckle from the lower ball joint. Let's continue with a hammer again. We're gonna cause some vibration in this area and then hopefully it'll dislodge the knuckle from the ball joint. We'll use a pickle fork to start dislodging this. Come right in between the ball joint and the steering knuckle. Use our hammer, give it a couple bonks to break it free. Grab onto that steering knuckle, lift it up, remove that lower ball joint nut, and now we can remove the steering knuckle from the vehicle. With that knuckle out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the ball joint. Along the top, you'll find that you have a snap ring holding it in place. We'll use some snap ring pliers, get onto that, separate the snap ring from the ball joint, and then remove the ball joint from the lower control arm. There it is. Now we can start removing the ball joint using a ball joint press, a cup, and a specialty adapter. We'll grab the cup that goes directly over the ball joint but still hits up against the control arm. Take that ball joint press, we'll put the spool all the way down as far as possible and apply pressure. There it is, friends. Okay, friends, let's prepare to install our brand new ball joint. Before you put this into the vehicle, have a look at the boot itself. You'll find that there's an area on the tip of it right here that has a little notch carved out. We wanna make sure that we have that notch facing inboard, so towards the engine. Let's take this ball joint and put it down underneath the lower control arm, making sure that that's facing inboard as it should. We're going to continue on with a couple ball joint tools here. These are the adapters. We want to find one that goes directly over the boot but presses on the base of the ball joint. You don't want to crush the boot. You just want to get up against the base all the way around. Now we can take that ball joint with the notch facing inboard. We'll put it down underneath the lower control arm. Take that adapter, put it right up against the base, making sure that we're not damaging the boot in any way. As we start pressing the ball joint up through the control arm, you'll find that it's gonna protrude a little bit up above this area. It's important to make sure you have a cup that fits just over the top of the control arm, leaving an area for the ball joint to come up and into. Once you have all that in place, we'll continue on with the ball joint press. Now we're gonna start pressing the ball joint up towards the control arm. You only need to bring it up far enough that this hits up against the lower control arm. Once 
once you feel as though you have it all the way up there, we'll cause a little bit of vibration. We're doing that to make sure that the ball joint's completely set. Release your tool. Once you're sure it's completely in place, continue on with your snap ring. We'll use our snap ring pliers inside each of the holes, spread the snap ring, put it over the ball joint, holding it in place. Make sure it's completely in the groove all the way around. It's a good idea to use some copper never seize on the splines of the axle, not necessarily the threaded area. Now it's time to install the knuckle onto here. As we do so, we're gonna come at an angle. We wanna make sure that we align the ball joint stud with the bottom hole on the knuckle and also start sliding the shaft of the axle through the rear side of that wheel bearing. Now we can bring this up into place and put on our ball joint nut. The next thing we'll do is start pushing the axle the rest of the way through the bearing. You can grab the axle from the backside, give it a little wiggle to slide it into place. We'll bring this up and start aligning our upper ball joint. To start bringing this knuckle up a little further, let's snug the lower ball joint nut. Use a 24 millimeter for this. Let's get this aligned. Swing the control arm down so we can start in the upper ball joint nut. Now we can torque the lower ball joint nut to 95 foot-pounds. Now you'll notice that on our nut, it is not a castle nut. The ball joint nut that you had installed is a castle nut. The reason why that is is because we went ahead and replaced the entire control arm. For the torque on the ball joint, it's still the same, but what you would want to do with the castle nut is to make sure that the hole in the slot is to make sure that the slot on the nut lines up with the stud on the ball joint itself. If it doesn't, continue tightening until the very next slot does. After that, you just wanna go ahead and slide the cotter pin right on through there and peen it over. Let's move along to the upper ball joint nut. We'll use a 21 millimeter socket for this, snug it and torque it to 70 foot pounds. Once you have it torqued, you want to pay attention to the slot on the nut. Make sure it aligns with the hole in the ball joint. If it doesn't, continue tightening that nut until the very next slot does. Take that cotter pin, slide it through, peen it over. Align your outer tie rod end, slide it into place, start on the 21 millimeter nut, snug it up. Torque that to 80 foot pounds. Let's move along to the brake caliper. We'll slide it in position over the rotor, align our two mounting bolt holes, and start in each of those 21 millimeter headed bolts. Now we can snug them up and torque them to 130 foot-pounds. Now we can make our way to the ABS wire. Press that in, listen for a click, make sure it's secured together. 
Now we'll continue by pressing this through the fender well from the backside out through the forward area. We can take this and put it in position. Press that down, make sure it's secure. Now it's time to reinstall the axle nut. You'll notice that I'm a lot closer to the ground for this because as we start to tighten this, you'll find that this wants to spin on you. The reason why we're close to the ground is because you can use a long pry bar, carefully get in between your studs, making sure that you're not going to damage them anyway, and that'll hold this still while you continue. We'll put on the axle nut, start it on there by hand and snug it up. Once you have it snugged by hand, go ahead and torque it to 185 foot pounds. Let's remove the lug nut and the spacer from this area. Let's get our wheel on here. Start on all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out. Once you have those snug, get the wheel safely back down on the ground. We'll continue on to torquing each of the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds. Torqued. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, go ahead and hop inside the passenger compartment. Pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't have an ABS light and no funny noises. After that, go ahead and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.